Paul says, for I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. We've been looking at this uh, passage now for a number of weeks. In fact, according to my uh, estimate, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 16 times we've We've looked at this, uh, this section of scripture, this paragraph. And what we've been attempting to do is, is just to articulate the, the abundance of truth that is so impregnated in, that the scripture is so impregnated with the, these, uh, these truths, marvelous, marvelous truths that demand exposition. The, the text says, Paul says, written by the pen of man, but by the heart and mind of the Spirit of God, moved upon Paul. Paul says, for I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. So basically, we've been looking at the person, who is Christ, and we, we discussed this issue of why it was so important, um, in fact, vital, in fact, essential, not just important, not vital, but essential, that Christ alone was the only one who could die for our sins. As the, uh, the only God-man who could, who could uh, properly, effectively, and efficiently deal with the issue of sin. No one else, no one else could. So the Godhead, again, sends the Son. God the Father sends the Son. And it's called and shared with you this uh, hypostatic union, this joint uh, um, union of both spirit of God or, or the person of God and the, the, the human spirit joined together in one being called Jesus Christ, the person. That's why he's called Christ. He's the person sent as the Messiah to deal with the sin issue, to make atonement, to make reconciliation for sin. We've been looking at the person. We've been looking at the problem, according to the scripture. Uh, Christ, the person, died for our sins. Clearly, sin is the issue. And make no mistake about it, it is still the issue, um, as far as God is concerned. It, um, it, it, it's, it demanded this, this, uh, the payment of a penalty, and that's our next point. The problem is sin, and how God deals with the problem of sin, not just sins, but sin in total. How did God deal with sin in total? Well, there was a penalty attached to sin. Scripture says in Ezekiel, the soul that sins shall surely die. God told Adam be, uh, before he ate the fruit, warned him, in the day you eat, eating you will surely die. And dying you will die. It, it, it was just certain. It was just an obvious certain reality that to void God's will is to invite sin and death. It's inescapable. There's no way around it. You can't logically approach it to violate the will of God, to transgress. Scripture says the transgression of the law of God is sin. To go beyond the boundaries that God has set, it is sin. How does God deal with that? There's a penalty attached to it. And scripture says Christ died. For our sins. The, the penalty for, for sin is death. And this is a marvelous uh, aspect of this passage here. Paul says Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That's the provision. The problem is sin, the penalty is death, the person who deals with it is Christ. The provision, he dies 
for our sin. I mentioned this um, a few weeks ago. I want to elaborate excuse me, a little more on, on this, that uh, this, this idea of for, Christ dying for, simple word, simple word, um, it simply means on behalf of. Um, the, 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 the word there, um, the preposition, indicates the, the relationship of the action to you and I, what Christ died. So, what does that have to do with you and I? Well, the word preposition for describes the relationship of Christ's actions relative to us. What? On our behalf. Christ died. So, what does it matter that he died? What matters that he died, the reason why he died, was what the word for indicates, on our behalf. That's significant, beloved. That's the provision that God has made for us in Jesus Christ. This, this uh, marvelous provision, we call it the atonement, that Christ made an atonement for our sins. And here we are coming up on the, the Easter celebration. And we've been talking about actually the gospel, the, this aspect of, of the, uh, the atonement. What, weeks ago, we, we, we've been talking about it, just illustrating again that our message about the gospel, about the atonement, it's not seasonal. It's far from seasonal. We, we don't preach um, the gospel just because it's the season. Um, the, the gospel is everything we preach. It's, 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 the, it's the core of our message. It's, it's, we preach it year round. The message of the gospel and the implications for you and I as believers. There, there are the implications for the lost people. There are implications in the gospel for you and I as believers. But whenever we preach, if we're going to be faithful in our exposition of Scripture, we're, we need to preach the gospel. And so no matter where we start in Scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, it all points to the gospel, Amen. the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, we, we need to grasp that, that the Bible has one theme. One theme, and, and the theme, uh, again, is um, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the subject is, is Jesus Christ. Amen. The person, this person, this God-man, he is the subject of Scripture. He thought so. He told the, the two uh, witnesses on the, on the road to Emmaus. He, he took them through um, the exposition of the Old Testament, showing in the Old Testament Every instance throughout the, 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 uh, the Pentateuch, throughout the, the major, minor prophets pointing to himself that the prophets spoke about him. The Bible is about Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you come up with any other subject or any other um, person as being the most significant um, uh, um, subject of Scripture, then you've missed it. God help um, our Jehovah Witnesses who think the Bible is about the kingdom. The Bible, the Bible is about the king. The, the kingdom is, is a, 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 a subset of what the king is going to do. But first we've got to acknowledge that he's king. Let's deal with this, that he is both king and creator. And, and if we miss it, if we get focused on, on, on the kingdom, we've missed the king. What, what, what good is having a kingdom without a king? He reigns, he reigns. And may it be so in your life as well. God help our, our um, dear brother, uh, Eddie Long, who's been crowned king. And king of what? I have no idea. <laughs> But I, I pray that someone in his inner circle, I, I pray, I, you know, I pray that somebody in my inner circle 
would, would challenge me when, when I go off or if I ever go off. Please be prepared to challenge me if I tell you I am king. Please come and help me. I beg you, and you, you think I'm kidding, but I'm telling you the truth. I need your help. If any man thinks that he is worthy of honor that belongs only to Jesus Christ, he's self-deceived. And he's a liar. The truth is not in him. And beloved, I just pray that people in his inner circle, and, and I, I don't know what happens to, um, I don't know, I, I, maybe, maybe it comes with the territory, the potential that, that we get in, into places called pulpits. We stand before people, and I guess the, when you stand before people, there is this, this sense of perhaps this, uh, the, the, the potential for um, arrogance and, and, and uh, pride can enter in and, and, and cause uh, the potential for self-deception. That's why I want godly men in, in, my, in my circle. I don't, I don't want yes men in my circle. I want, I want godly men in my circle who will keep my feet tied to this ground. Who will keep me reminded about my, my own, that I am flesh. That I, it's potential for me to fall and to fail. I need godly people in my circle. And be, because um, this, this, and this, this work that we do is, it, it can, it can, we, we can be lifted up. Yes, sir. But thank God for, for godly men uh, who come along to, to uh, remind me <laughs> about my, 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 my flesh. That, I'm, that there's one, there's only one yes, <laughs> that we worship. Jesus. His name is Jesus. Yeah. God save us from others who try to insert themselves where, where Christ alone belongs. Yeah, so um, this, this, this Christ, he's the person who dealt with the problem. And so the, the, the whole idea he provides in this text, um, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, verse 3, for Christ died for our sins. And you know what? Um, I have no problem. I have no problem um, coming back to this passage now or around the 15th or 16th time, I have no problem um, opening this Bible at 1 Corinthians 15 now for the 15th, 16th time. I have no problem, no apology. Um, and and for, the, for those of you who are saying, you know what, when are you going to move on? You know what, you know what, 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 I, what I'm doing here is just using 1 Corinthians 15 as the platform, as the launch pad. But, but we, we go from here. You can, you can preach the Bible from 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3. That's what I want you to know. That this is just the doorway into every other aspect of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, both Old and New Testament. So don't, don't grow weary in well-doing. <laughs> For you, you shall reap if you faint not. Let's stay, stay with me here. It, it's, it's not, um, I, you know what, and, and I guess this gets around to, to uh, ritualistic, um, ritualisms in church. We, we can make rituals out of anything. Everything. That, and that, again, speaks to the, the potential of the evil in our hearts. That we can, we can take a good thing and make it an evil thing if we approach it wrong. And, and so even in the preaching of the word, we're, we're accustomed to um, this Sunday, the preacher will preach on this subject. The next Sunday, it will be the next subject. And, and so on. But, but uh, again, expositional preaching, and, and, and that, the whole point of expositional preaching is, is to connect dots for you, for you and I. We, we need to see the connection between what, what God says in the old, because Paul says these things are written for our learning. Amen. We need to learn that, because if you have, if you have an understanding of the gospel that, that, doesn't, that doesn't embrace the teaching of the Old Testament, you have neglected, you have neglected to understand the fullness of the gospel. You don't understand the gospel. If you don't understand it in the context of what the Old Testament is teaching. You, you can just say, yeah, Christ died. But, but what does that mean? Why did he die? Who is he? Where did he come from? Where does death come from? What, what is death? And why, why does somebody have to die for sin? See, every question I've asked goes back to the Old Testament. 
And if you don't understand it, if we don't understand it in that context, and, and quite frankly, I'm convinced of this as well, that that's one of the reasons why we, we uh, are, are bashful when it comes to declaring the gospel, because we don't fully understand it. If you understood it, if you understand it, then you ought to have boldness in declaring it. One of the reasons I think we don't share the gospel through the week with people that we see, we see the emptiness, we see the vanity in their eyes, we see the death that's looming in their souls, and we, we keep our mouths shut. The only explanation, either we don't know the gospel or we're not confident in our ability to share it. And, and, and hence, that's why, we, what we want to do in our exposition, we want to show you all of the, the, the connections. We want to connect the dots for you so that you'll take this message and, and you'll go home, meditate on it, and the Spirit of God will, will fuse it into your soul so that this week, when, when, you, when you look at, at a, a person that, that, that the Spirit of God is, is whispering in your spirit, saying, go ahead, tell him, tell him you'll come back to 1 Corinthians 15 3 and you'll say well Christ died for our sins see listen now, now, now forget any other hope they have no other hope beloved there, there is no other possibility of hope out of this world this, this I say to you is it Christ died for our sins confront them with the truth of the gospel well, why did he die? See, it, it's a provision that he made, and it's based on an Old Testament, um, an Old Testament concept. And I want to take you there. Look at Leviticus chapter sixteen. In in what's called the law, the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch. This this the first five books of Moses were um, written. Yes, by Moses. We do not believe other writers wrote Moses, but uh, wrote um, the Pentateuch. I believe it was written by Moses, the one author, here in um, Leviticus. This book of Leviticus is, is a book about being holy, being holy, holy before God. Imagine again, uh, a half, one and a half million people, maybe two million people coming out of, out of Egypt. God calls them out, brings them out of Egypt, brings them out of bondage brings them out into the wilderness and his his intention is to take them to a new land a new place he frees them from spirit from 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 physical bondage um, and slavery preparing them to take them into a land of, of hope and plenty but before they go in the land god god has to acquaint them with his ways because what he wants from them, he wants them to be, a, in fact, he says in Deuteronomy chapter 7, he wants them to be a holy people, a separate people. Yes. So he prepares them by, with, with this issue of holiness. And here in, in chapter 16, um, he gives uh, uh, meticulous, meticulous instructions about how the people of God need to be holy before God what it takes to be holy before God. Now, if, if that doesn't concern you, then, then you really do have a problem, beloved. You and I need to be concerned about being holy before God, whether you're saved or lost. The scripture says, be holy because I'm holy. He wants his people holy. And, and so he gives instructions, these meticulous Instructions about how to deal with the issue of or the problem of sin. In the Old Testament, a wonderful illustration of what we call the atonement. I want to take you there. Look at uh, chapter 16. And I want you to um, look. Let's start reading. I'm not going to read the whole uh, chapter, but I want to kind of cherry pick, pick out some of the verses, the salient uh, verses that that help us to understand this idea of the atonement um, here in 16 and I want you to see verse 6 Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering which is for himself and make atonement for himself and for his house Amen. on the day of atonement this, this day of atonement for the nation of Israel occurred once a year. 
It was a convocation, a wonderful uh, time once a year. It was a holy convocation of the people of God where they would gather um, by way of their leaders and, and recognizing that this one time a year, once a year, they had to deal with the problem. They had to deal with the problem of sin in the nation. How did they deal with it? God told Aaron that before you can deal with other people's sin, Aaron, deal with yours. Get a bull. Get a bull, he told him. And that's what verse 6 is talking about. Get a bull for yourself and for your family. Because I want you to know what God is illustrating with, with Aaron and with the people of God, that you do not enter into God's presence the way you want to. If, if you want to be pleasing to God, you've got to come the way he wants you to come, the way he provides. So he provides a way, a method where sinful people can approach the presence of God. Now, now may, may God save you from your arrogance and, and from your, your pride. And, and if, if you think that as, as a sinner that you have something that God needs or, or that will impress God with who you are and what you've done, no, no, you need to realize that in the presence of God, uh, you and I are, are sinful people. You need to deal with that, that matter. And that's what this atonement is all about, that God wants a, a, a particular method for dealing with the problem. What is it? Some innocent animal has to die in your place. That's why he said, go get a bull. And that, that to me is incredible. That for this one man and his family, he has to find a bull. Bulls, I guess, weigh a couple thousand, maybe a thousand pounds. That's a big animal. This high priest, because of his position, had to have a bull to die. Because God had to impress on Aaron. If, if no one else, Aaron had to realize that sin is a big issue with God. And that in, in order to fix it, some innocent animal has to die in Aaron's place. And in order to do that, he, look at the text, he will make atonement for himself and for his house. The word there for atone in the, in the Old Testament, the uh, Hebrew word is the word kafar, which means to, um, in its literal sense, in one of the literal senses, is it means to cover, to cover. In fact, um, if, if you, uh, I, I looked the word up, and, and the word kafar is, is used when, when God told Noah to build the ark. Amen. He told Noah to go get some pitch. In the English, it says pitch. But the word he's talking about there is the word kafar. Because the kafar, this pitch or whatever this, this gook was, it, it acted as a covering yes, sir. to fill the hole so that that ark wouldn't what? Sing. Wouldn't sink. <laughs> See, without the, the proper covering, we're lost. See that? Our, well, you put it in, in nautical terms, our ship will sink. Amen. See that? Well, well here in, in, in the... Uh, in, in Judah's um, atonement, the, the idea of covering or this idea of, yeah, covering the atonement is this issue of how, how do we cover sin? How do we do with this? How do we deal with this? And, and one, one of the uh, main points of, of this, this whole idea of, of um, the Old Testament process is, is that it was, it was temporary. I, I, follow with me. Um, I'm, here, look at verse 7. He shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. What's going on here? That here he brings two goats before the Lord. One of those goats was for the Lord. The other goat was for the, to be a scapegoat. The one that was dedicated to the Lord was the, was the goat that was going to die, innocent animal, on behalf of people. The other goat is called the scapegoat, Azazel, to escape or to let go 
And, and so these two goats were brought. The one goat gets slaughtered. The blood is taken into the holiest of holies. Once Aaron gets his sin covered, he then takes the blood from the goat, sprinkles it on the, on the mercy seat. Oh, beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. Who, who's our mercy seat? Jesus. He's, he, he's our, our mercy seat. And, and so Aaron goes into the holiest of holies once a year to sprinkle this blood on, on the holiest place, in the holiest place, on the mercy seat. Beautiful picture of what, what took place at Calvary. That goat died. But then the, the other goat, look with me at verse um, 20. And when he has made an end of, the, of, of atoning for the holy place, the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, he shall bring the living goat. Aaron shall lay both hands on the head of the live goat. Confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions concerning all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat and shall send it away. Azazel into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to an uninhabited land and he shall release the goat in the wilderness. The first goat, he is slaughtered for the people. Paul said Christ died for our sins who pair on our behalf the whole principle comes from this day of atonement here in Leviticus that uh, Christ is fulfilling the Old Testament requirement for atonement. An innocent being has to die for sinful people. The innocent goat had to die for the sins to cover, cover the sins of the people. The other goat the high priest was to take that goat and, and put both hands, as we just read, on the head of the goat. And as he's doing that, he's reciting. He's reciting all of the sins of the people. That probably took some time, you think? So they weren't in a rush. Not on the Day of Atonement. Once a year, they expected to be there a while. As, as, he, as he grabs that goat's head, he is, he is what's, what's called transferring the sins of the people to that goat. In fact, the, the uh, scripture calls it, Paul calls it in Romans, he calls it, Romans 4, he calls it imputed, imputation. That our sins were imputed to Christ. On the cross, God the Father imputed our sinfulness our sins, our transgressions on to the son. Transferred. Now what's marvelous, what's marvelous about this is that the, the, the goat, the goat that, that took those, those sins, that goat would live, but someone had to take that goat once all the imputation, once all of the transferal of those sins were placed on that goat. Somebody had to take that goat out into the wilderness. And, 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 and they would never see that goat again. Picturing what? That, that the sins of the people are, are Azazel. <laughs> Gone. The, and in fact, they would, I believe from some traditions, they would say, the goat has left the building. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the goat has left the building. Why? Because our sins, he is what? He's carried them away. Hallelujah. Out into the wilderness where they will never come back again. Beautiful picture of what God did in Jesus Christ. God transferred our sins to Jesus Christ. Past sins, present sins, future sins. Put them on Christ. Imputed. Imputed to him our, our sins, our death, our pain, our suffering from our sin. Christ suffered on the cross. What? On our behalf. 
And in his death, does what? Takes our sin where? Away. Yes. He has left the building. He left, he left, he took our sins. Both in, in the goat that dies, see, in the, in the death of the goat, we, we have the issue of the, the penalty, the penalty being paid. That goat that died, something, someone had to die for sin. What this illustrates in a marvelous way, there's no way I'm going to get through this message, but, but what this illustrates is the holiness of God. In, in, in such picturesque, graphic, picturesque terms. So that Israel realized, they saw this in their, in, in, in their face, that God is so holy that, that living beings have to die when we violate God's, trans, when we violate his law. And, 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 and so God, God wanted them to be sensitive to sin. Spirit of God wants us to be sensitive to sin, beloved. Death, somebody has to die. And, and unlike, unlike our, our current system, our legal system, the legal system is, has, has some, some of its trappings. They, they do come from, uh, again, uh, the, the, the basis of God's governance, as it were. Um, he does institute an ordained government. But what we're discovering from our human legal system are flaws. Yes, sir. We are flawed. Come on. Judges who wear their black robes, they are flawed men. And, and, and the law can be ever so right and rigid. But put the law in, in the hands of a flawed thinking man. And, and you're going to get, you're going to have abuse in our legal system. Yes, sir. And, and we, we needn't even discuss some of the horrendous abuse that has occurred to our, our people over the, over the ages, yes. over hundreds of years. But, but here, here, here is, is, is what is so glaringly, one of the glaring differences between our, our legal system and God's. See, we, we can... We think it's, it's, it's good that when, when a man, when a man kills, takes life, innocent life, we've gotten to a place in our culture where we, we don't have the stomach for putting people to death. We, we, we just think that's barbaric. It's inhumane. What was he? What would God? Is he? What, what's what's missing here? Is is the value of life? Amen. Amen. What what is what is the see what what, what our legal system does? Our, our judges and and, and and you know legal um, attorneys and whatnot. What they do? They put value on the, the criminal, the criminal's life. Yes. What about the value of the, the innocent person that died? How, how, do we, how do we declare to, to the community that that was an innocent life? And the, well, how do we declare to the community the value of that innocent life? How do we declare that? Well, in our current system, we, we declare it by sentencing a man um, to live forever uh, for the rest of his life in prison. That doesn't seem to equate. An innocent person dies... The guilty man lives. Yes. See, see, now in God's courtroom, if, if you sin, you die. Amen. Period. Guess what? You, you know what, what, what God doesn't do? Uh, um, who, who was it? Uh, I forgot. It was F. Lee Bailey. And, and uh, who was it? Um, I forgot. Uh, who was O.J.'s um, attorney? Johnny Cochran. If the glove doesn't fit... <laughs> you must acquit. Shrewd, smart, just, 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 just. I mean, courtroom finesse, and 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 the jury bought it. But let me tell you something. Rest assured, 
if in God's courtroom, it doesn't matter whether the blood fits. See, God doesn't acquit sinners. He doesn't acquit. And, and listen, 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 listen. When, 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 when OJ was acquitted, essentially, no one paid for that crime. Amen. See, that's, that's the failure of our flawed system. We, we have crimes being committed and, and no one has to pay. No one pays. But in God's uh, ju justice, everybody who sins is going to pay. Amen. There are no acquittals. The only, the only way you will not have to pay, you need to find someone to pay for you. That's, that's the only way out. That, that's the only way you need to find. Now, now, if you think you can go back to the Old Testament and find a bull, a goat, or something, we've moved beyond that. See, that, that was the way it was in the economy of the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament was a picture of what's coming in the New. And so in the presence of, in the person of Jesus Christ, God has sent Christ to be the propitiation for our sins. And not ours only, but the sins of the world. That the only place, the only place where atonement will occur or has occurred was at the cross. So, so if, you, if you today are sitting and, and, and you haven't dealt with your sins, then, then I'm, going to, I'm going to invite you, I beg you, I plead with you, look at Calvary. Go right now in your spirit, in your mind, in your heart, go to Calvary because at the cross where I first saw the light, the burden of my sin was rolled away. That's where you need to go. You need to go to the cross. And don't you dare sit there trying to justify yourself, trying to excuse yourself, saying that God is too loving to send you to hell. Brother, you're not reading the scriptures that I read. God is a holy God, and, and somebody's going to deal with your sin. If you don't accept what Christ did, then you've got to pay for your own. That's what hell is for. Tell us for the place where people who have rebelled, transgressed against God, don't want his authority, don't want him to rule. God has to deal with him. See, our, our legal system, we, 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 we don't think like God. But God, you know what? God's going to be true to himself first. Before, before he violates his, his laws, God's going to hold true to his holiness. And, he, and, and I know, you know what? See, see here it is, here it is. We, 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 say, we say God is too loving. But see, what, what we miss is that he, he's a, he has a holy love. See, yeah. his holiness, his holiness uh, per, uh, uh, it's so pervasive within his being even his, even his love for us is holy and he's, he's, too, he, he's too holy in his love yes. and, and you know what he, he loves people scripture teaches it but he's so holy that, that he'll let he'll permit sinful people go to hell yeah, I know he loves you, but he has a holy love. <laughs> and, you, you, you know, we, we've got to deal with sin. Amen. See, that's what the cross is all about. Christ died on behalf of our sin.